Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. In this episode I'm going to be bringing my missions into orbit around Mars and that's going to be a little bit new for me because we're using the inflatable heat shields uh, for the most part and I don't have a whole lot of data on them. I have data on 4 meter or 5 meter heat shields um, mostly collected during the Beyond History series and so I'm going to have to figure out how well these work and yeah so I'll be getting numbers down for that hopefully the numbers I have are relevant to this situation as well uh, based on ballistic uh, coefficient and everything which is the mass of the thing divided by the area of the heat shield should still be a number that is worth calculating by I've made one change okay two changes to the install uh, first uh, I've extended the range of the commutron 88-88 so that it seems more like it's capable of doing what its description says it's capable of doing, basically. It said that it was able to communicate to Jupiter, and yet it was at 50% on this distance between Earth and Mars. I mean, you can see, if it's at 50% here, it's not going to be able to communicate to Jupiter at all, right? I mean, and it'll pretty soon be stretched to a limit as Earth goes on the opposite side of the Sun from Mars and wouldn't be able to communicate. So I adjusted its distance and now the signal strength is 94% and I believe that should be enough so that it could communicate with Jupiter uh, from, if Earth is on the opposite side of the Sun from Jupiter. So that would uh, match those expectations. Of course we have two of them on here even so I'm probably still underdoing it. You know they should be combining their efforts. So that's a change number one and uh, that's just in the realism overhaul configurations they probably configured it properly for remote tech but not for stock but there are stock configurations in the realism overall uh, configuration file they probably just didn't uh, update them or something anyway uh, that's the only antenna I've, uh, I messed with on that but we'll see how the other antennae work and uh, judge from their performance uh, the other change was that I updated Kerbalism, not the Kerbalism RO configurations, uh, but somebody in the RO Discord forum uh, said that I should update Kerbalism and that might fix the electric charge problem, so we'll see. And uh, But again, I don't know if I was supposed to also update the RO configurations for Kerbalism. I decided to hold off on that just in case. So yeah, um, we're recharging here. And I'm only visiting this particular mission to talk about the Commutron 88-88. This is the mission that everything else is sort of communicating through. Well, it doesn't really show it right here, but that's, well, whatever. They are. And uh, I visited the two Mars scanners uh, to get their charge back up. But the sat pack is not facing the right direction at all right now. So that's the only one of our Mars missions that is depleted. And if necessary, I guess we'll fix that once it enters Mars SOI. And we'll just do the cheat as suggested. That's Hopefully that'll be the only one that we need to cheat with. Okay, so other than that, I'm going to follow along with the Mars transfer vehicle. Well, I'll probably go to the tracking station and see. And if it turns out that the electric charge situation isn't fixed, we'll find out because in about three days, something will tell me that it's depleted. Now one thing I found out looking through the Kerbalism configuration files is that the random failures are disabled for realism overhaul and that's because the parts aren't properly configured for them for random failure. Oh, Mars transfer vehicle batteries are getting low. I checked it, it's panels, uh, so my, my situation has not improved despite updating Kerbalism to the master, um, so the latest master on the GitHub. Definitely depleted electric charge and if Kerbals were on here and I had climatization enabled they would they would die if they lose electric charge. Well I'll just stick with this and time warp here. That'll at least eliminate one thing that's gonna run out of electric charge. I I mean it's probable that a Mars scanner ran out of electric charge but again it should be facing the right direction. Oh, Phobos uh, Super Lander H2 is getting low. It's possible that the way KSP Interstellar deals with electric charge might be interfering somehow. But that's 
you know, like beyond my pay grade. That's KSB Interstellar is one of the most complicated mods in the whole thing. The other one is uh, SSTU Labs. Those two I can't really mess with. So I'm just going to keep time warping. Now we have to start this burn a little bit ahead of the actual maneuver node. Expecting about 13 to 14 days to complete this maneuver. Okay, I've started the, the ion engine burn. But a few peculiarities. First of all, this solar array, array wing and this one say blocked by aero shielding. This I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand how they could be blocked. The other ones uh, all seem fine. I mean, uh, yeah, getting a little bit less power out here than I thought they would, but I'll, I still don't know if maybe that's because of the solar panel degradation, but I don't think it should happen on this time scale. I don't know. They've been out for a year and 200 days or so, maybe. But anyway, so uh, this is actually going to take longer than expected. We'll see. Yep, this is happening uh, quite a bit slower because two of our solar panels aren't doing anything. Okay, we're quite a bit out from the plotted node. I think I'm going to have to replot at this point. All right, let's see what I can do. Okay, I'm going to execute this largely radial uh, correction. That's a correction because of the bad timing of the other burn. Uh, part of it is still prograde, so that will help out our eventual capture. Still, the eventual capture will have to start out way before we even enter Mars SOI. <laughs> this, this uh, part of the interesting complications of this business, and uh, part of this game is learning how to use the ion engines. And don't worry, eventually I'll use the ion engines in conjunction with a nuclear reactor and sort of do a, do something with that. But uh, for now, I'm just learning the ion engines by themselves. This isn't too bad, 1,400 to capture after this burn. Okay, I conducted that burn, but it took uh, longer than expected again, so we again have a radial issue. And worse, uh, that means that the next burn is going to be very radial, which isn't great for our solar panels. I retracted these two because they, uh, uh, in, uh, con I was concerned that they would block our good solar panels, uh, but uh, right now it says cannot deploy while stowed, so that's basically our problem. Probably going to the map view and coming back would help, but we'll see. We really need to start this one off right away, but we have the Mars scanner to deal with. I'll, uh, I'll turn to the node and start it off, and then we'll jump to the Mars scanner when that alarm occurs, and hopefully the Mars scanner will have power. Right now it doesn't say that it does, so we'll see. After this burn, it'll take about a thousand meters per second to capture around Mars. So we'll see. We'll see. Do we have enough liquid methane and oxygen left to help us out with that? I don't know. Okay, well, it seems that uh, when we pop back to it, hopefully persistent rotation did its thing, even though there was no electric charge. So maybe, maybe that aspect is okay. All right, we have a maneuver here with the Mars scanner, and we are going to time warp. This communication isn't great, but that's because of its distance between itself and the Pioneer Station module. So eventually they'll close that distance once they arrive at Mars anyway. This is a very minor correction. I'm mostly concerned with the situation with the Mars transfer vehicle, of course. Right now it's uh, positioned as a radial burn, it's not really good. Because then it really only gets to use one set of solar panels, not even two. And we can get rid of that alarm. Okay, well, now I'm gonna hop back to the tracking station and then go to the Mars transfer vehicle and see what I can do with it. Okay, back at the Mars transfer vehicle, we've got the other pair out now and they are working, but our orientation is horrible. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, we've started, we've got seven days to maneuver node. 
and three days until we have to deal with the pioneer module that might actually be arriving okay we are back with the Mars scanner because it is finally arriving at Mars there's Mars and we are one way uh, one hour and 50 minutes away from the node to capture it's still got communication let's take a look at our communication lines um, so we've already crossed the orbit of Deimos and our communication line is going back that way it looks like so once we pass over like this we'll lose communication we should probably start this burn early it's 16 minutes okay well maybe we should just start it now I want to check how high we have to be for the resource scanner oh we're, we're back in that mode the scan sap mode I'm so confused. Okay, fine. We're back in the ScanSat mode. <laughs> uh, I thought we were in the stockish. It says that this altitude is ideal, so we definitely want to pull that periapsis up in that case. Well, we've done a patch here. We've got dirt. Resource ore. Got a little bit of ore there. Very little. Zero percent guess we should keep an eye on it to see where the scansat altitude stops being ideal we are at a polar inclination no problem there well this is altitude suboptimal at 1000 kilometers we've actually plot for uh, tighter than necessary capture given the scansat altitude thing but is that a good enough altitude for the stock version I don't know we definitely don't have any enough delta v4 anymore so still pretty crappy ore all over the pole there at least there's some but is it just polar? maybe it's gonna be rather inconvenient okay we have captured around Mars our first arrival in the series okay I'll reserve the rest of the fuel just in case but uh, well we've got it it's got to be scanning probably better on this part of the orbit than that part of the orbit but it's here alright I'm gonna go back to the Mars transfer vehicle do more of that burn and then I'll come back to you when we have to do what we need to do with the pioneer module and let's see if we can that's probably doing a entry burn I mean uh, you know en entering the SOI and doing a minor correction well yeah we'll deal with that when we get there okay so we're with the pioneer module and it has entered Mars SOI and we need to make a correction we can do that correction right now uh, to get it closer our periapsis well I think things have changed dramatically though because this correction doesn't seem enough to get our periapsis low so we're gonna have to do more of a burn than we planned hopefully we'll have enough starting earlier is better in this case but I've noticed that we we lost a lot of nitrogen pretty sure I packed enough nitrogen for a decent amount of time but I guess not that's gonna be a problem since it's a surface base we need to get this into the atmosphere too it's not gonna be easy to simply get nitrogen to it we'll have to hook it up and everything I guess probably a rover will be required I didn't send a rover this time oh I went too far I'd be tempted to just follow this in at this point but we really need to do some more ion engine burning so we can't afford the time so anyway I'll sort this one out, get it to a decent periapsis. Let's take a look at our heat shield loading. We've got 18.2 tons. Calculator's out. And it's a 10, foot, uh, 10 meter diameter heat shield. So um, we're talking about 78 square meters. And 18.272 divided by that. And yeah. Uh, the fact of the matter is I've never brought anything with that low a heat shield loading 
the lowest that I've got on my data is 509 kilograms per square meter. This one is 232, which means that we should be way high up in Mars' atmosphere in order to capture. So, but how high in Mars' atmosphere? That's the question. Now, but this can land, so we don't have to do too much, but I'd like to use it to test the capture thing. Look at that nitrogen go. It's going at a rate of one per second. There's no way it started out like that. I think something has gone horribly wrong. Yeah, I mean, it's 0.84. Did, did uh, installing the new version of Kerbalism like undo the RO configuration, which has the nitrogen going at a good rate? I don't understand how it could be 0.84 at this point. Did they configure this module? Maybe because this was something that I configured for Kerbalism myself, didn't I? But then I didn't set the nitrogen consumption rate. That was just built into the RO configurations. This is going to be a problem. Yep. Okay, that's probably too far. I mean, it says five years and ten days of supplies for the station mo that station module. I don't know why this one is leaking like crazy. Well, it says pressurizing as if it wasn't pressurized. Well, it's not going to have enough to pressurize, so... Oh, well, I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, uh, 50.6. Let me take a look at my data and see whether that's any good. Okay, I think my hypothesis is going to be that 50 is going to be okay for capture, but won't bring us straight down. We're going to see. And then we'll pass by, pass through a second time in order to come down. We'll see if that's the case. But I'm going to go back to the Mars transfer vehicle and continue to um, do ion engine burns. Okay, I handled a bit of the burn with the Mars transfer vehicle, though that's seriously worrying me. Uh, it's taking a lot longer than I expected to do those burns and I don't know if we have enough methane and oxygen to capture with the tug engines yet. Of course the more xenon we burn off the better. But anyway, here we go. We're going to try and capture with this. Hmm, communications is another issue. We're going to lose it about here-ish. So that's when we have to get rid of the stage and everything. Oh, well, this will actually be much lighter. I was including the mass of the stage. Of course, that's not part of it. Hmm, it might come straight down after all. Anyway. Let me activate... Well, if I do it that way, the gimbling's not going to work, so let me just activate that. Okay, that's activated. There wasn't any boil off here, but that was because we weren't focused on it. Okay, separation. All right, that's good. Inflating the heat shield. Do not jettison the heat shield. And we can retract the solar panels. Sort of interested in how the heck there's no electric charge consumption when we don't seem to be getting any... Oh, now there is. Okay, I guess we were getting power somehow even though the sun is blocking, being blocked by Mars? I don't know. And just in case, I'll arm the parachutes. Though I don't think this will survive if I can't control it. Yeah, the Mars transfer vessel's nitrogen seemed fine, so it was just this for some reason that had the nitrogen problem. I even packed extra nitrogen, didn't I? Yeah, in here. See? I had little nitrogen packs. Oh, have we picked up some other communication? Oh, we're communicating back. Well, that's handy. 
That should be good. Back through one of our other missions, the Pioneer Station module, of course. We're actually coming in pretty darn fast compared to what I expected. That's not good, because that means that the heat shield is not going to be able to tolerate that. This doesn't like really fast entries. And Mechjeb isn't even holding retrograde. That's not handy either. Okay, well, since I have control... Oh, that's not helping. That's not helping. <laughs> Great. Um, I guess my little module at the top is too heavy? Is that what it's trying to tell me? Too bad the parachutes are on it. Oh. I'd much rather be in the other direction. <laughs> I don't like this inflatable heat shield now. Uh, so tenuous. I mean, there's not actually that much atmosphere around here. And maybe that will help us. But by the same token, if there's not enough atmosphere to slow you down, That's a problem. I mean, if, uh, if there's not much atmosphere, there's not much atmosphere. Enough atmosphere to slow you down is also enough atmosphere to kill things. Hmm. But I think we might make it. I wonder what the heat tolerance on this. This uh, Pioneer module wasn't even... It says skin max operating temp is 912. It couldn't have been blocked completely by this, could it? This actually has a pretty high one, 1950. I might have to reconsider that. Well, this whole inflatable heat shield thing has me concerned now. 50 kilometers is pretty good in the end, but I don't know if we were getting more drag from this direction than we would have with the heat shield first. But yeah, can I trust these things? Maybe they just don't have enough mass to pull the center mass down. This isn't light either, but, hmm. I mean, this does have fuel and everything. Okay, um, we still can't control it, so I can't stop the RCS from puffing all over the place. Don't know if that's a reliable result for the math department, but... Okay... Before I turn to anything else, let me regain communication, and maybe I'll just park it in orbit for now. Instead of bringing it down to the surface. So we'll, uh, okay, we've got communication. Let's get the solar panels out. Go to Apoapsis and... Occluded by vessel. Well, I don't care. Why does it say disable receiver? Oh, complications. Disable. Activate. While letting the sky crane use more fuel is probably to our benefit. We need it a lot lighter before it uh, lands this, otherwise it'll be trying to land its sky crane first, which isn't going to work. Well, the parachute should write it up, but still. So I'm just going to put it into a parking orbit right now. Uh, can we use the engines even though we've got the heat shield on? No, the heat shield is blocking the thrust. Okay, this is at a safe height of 130 kilometers. We'll deal with it after we deal with all the other stuff arriving because I want to get things situated first and then think about it carefully and then work on it. So anyway, it's part and uh, let's. I'll be turning back to the Mars transfer vehicle but I'll next record when we have to deal with the Mars Xenon refueler. Okay, here we are with the Mars Xenon refueler, and of course it's going to need to get into the atmosphere, and hopefully this heat shield is going to do a better job, maybe? I don't know. 
Uh, but first things first, let's handle this maneuver. Well, what's the heat tolerance? Seems I like this 19... Oh, the, the Sky Crane configuration was probably copied off of this uh, supply tug. That's why the max temp is the same. But the Xenon tank itself is only 912 Kelvin. Oh, I guess we do have to correct inclination to meet up with everything else. Okay. Alright, that is better. Not perfect, but better. Now this is 22 tons and it's all going on the heat shield. And 50 kilometers ended up well, that was complicated with the last mission and how it tumbled about, but uh, it did capture properly, so 50 kilometers might not be enough for this this time, because this is heavier. It's not a whole lot, well, let's go with 49 kilometers and see. It'll have some fuel to correct later on, of course, but we want to save as much as possible. Alright, I've got some more ion engine burning to do. It's not going well, to be honest. It doesn't seem like I'm getting enough of it done ahead of the mission actually entering Mars SOI. We've only got 11 days until it enters Mars SOI. Okay, the Xenon refueler is approaching Mars. Let's take a look at our comm situation. So this is mission number three. Uh, we've got one, the Pioneer module in that orbit. We've got the Mars scanner in that orbit. They're probably both dead at the moment. <laughs> I mean, because uh, it's just not keeping very good track of electric charge. A Mars scanner, that one, yes, is dead. And uh, Pioneer module is actually alive still. But by that dead and alive, I mean with power. Uh, or is that the Mars scanner that's around Mars? I guess that's the Mars scanner that's around Mars, and this one is around the Sun. So this one around the Sun is currently... Uh, whatever. Anyway, so yeah, uh, passing by on this side, we are good for... Good for, pa uh, good for communication, sorry. Good for communication. Um, yep, yeah. and that is counterclockwise, along with the Phobos and Deimos and everything else, so that's good. I hope I parked the Pioneer module in the right direction too, right? Let me see. Oh no, it's retrograde. Gosh darn it. Well, it have to happen once, I suppose. <laughs> no wonder it was going so fast. Well, I don't know if that would have any effect. Mm, it's uh, Entry velocity was more than I thought it would be, but mm, I don't think that was because of that. Anyway, this time we've got it right though. And it doesn't matter for the Pioneer module, uh, Pioneer um, module, yeah, because it's got to land on the surface anyway. It's just a matter of aesthetics. Okay, so let's inflate heat shield at this point. And again, we should have continuous communication, so that's not a problem. Should have communi <laughs> continuous communication. Of course, as long as we capture, we can pass through the atmosphere again. So there's that. Okay, we need to control from something other than this probe right now. Uh, how about this docking port? That's better. Chance of this flipping around is high, to be honest. Not just because this is a very long thing, but also because I'm not entirely sure it's perfectly balanced for that. I tried to shift the heat shield so that it'd be under the center of mass, but we'll see how well that worked for me. Here we go. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, if you can imagine a capsule on top of this. Still coming in pretty fast. We're not slowing down at all. Well, now we are, but it took a while. Oh, there's some yaw problem. We are not slowing down anywhere near enough. 
No, wow. Not, not even close. That is pretty bad. We'll need to dump about 2,000 meters per second more to actually capture around Mars. Yeah, I don't know how this has so little drag, actually. Seems like something went completely wrong. It's an aberrant number in my data. It's like uh, three times less drag than it ought to have. And you can consider the previous mission we brought into the atmosphere. I mean, yes, it tumbled, though, so that's a complicating thing. I don't know. What does FAR actually have to say about this thing right now? Hmm. The reference area of only 19 meters squared is weird. Because this is, you know, 5 meter radius, that's 25 squared. It's, so it should be 75 meters squared or more. Because 3 times 25. Okay, well we need to deal with this. So I'm gonna dump the heat shield and try and use thrust. We'll see. Okay, uh, control from here. Yeah, this is a bit weird to have that, I mean, yes, I mean, we had more of a heat shield loading than the previous missions, so, I don't know. And we went lower in the atmosphere than the previous mission, too, and our entry into the atmosphere was slower. Oh, I don't really don't need a wasting fuel rocking back and forth right now. No? I guess that's because of the uneven distribution of the mass now. Yeah, but the gap in what Far said was the reference area. I mean, see, without the heat shield right now, the reference area is 25 meters squared. But with the heat shield, it was 19. I mean, of course, the direction we were hitting the atmosphere was different, but still. I think there's something fishy there. And the... the factor by which that's off is about the same as the factor that the loss of velocity was off based on my expectations so okay well that sucks but all right it is what it is we'll have to review the situation later we'll have to see how the other missions do with the inflatable heat shield so far i have not been confident about its its performance after all it is marked non ro so you know i only have myself to blame but we sort of need it need the inflatable heat shields heck real missions need inflatable heat shields so anyway uh, i'll have a brief interlude with the ion ship the mars transfer vehicle and then we'll take a look at what's happening with the pioneer station module which is pretty critical because it's been facilitating our communications not with this this uh, apparently is communicating directly but Yep, we'll have to make sure to get that in safely. Okay, we are with the Pioneer Station module. Unfortunately, it has one of those heat shields, so we'll have to see. I'll take a look at FAR to see what the area it thinks the heat shield is, is, and then pick a periapsis based on that. But I'm interested in the fact that the signal strength is 58%. Now, when we last saw it at the beginning of this episode, it was 94%. And I, I checked the number on here. The antenna rating hasn't changed. Uh, 94%. It's it's a little bit more stretched, you know. Um, I think Earth was somewhere around here-ish. It might be double the length that it was at the beginning, maybe. Uh, but in that case, it'd be, what, 88%? Not 58%. So that's weird. Now that's not a problem because if you take a look at when Earth is over here, it's not going to be that much more distance. So we'll still have communication. It's just not what I was expecting because I thought I had set it to extend all the way to Jupiter, right? Oh well. Anyway, nothing quite works out the way I think it ought to. But that is purely my problem. <laughs> So far, the captures have... Well, the first capture went basically how I expected it to, minus the tumbling part. All right, I'll come back to you after I've done this correction to bring the periapsis into the atmosphere. Then we'll separate that off. It's really going pretty far, isn't it? Where does it think it's going to go? Anyway, 
Yeah. I'll be back. Okay, I've brought it down. I'm going to separate off this stage and inflate this and see what our numbers are. Inflate. Uh, don't hit the radiators. Okay. We don't really need the radiators out right now. See, now, <laughs> okay, the reference area for this right now is 72 meters squared, okay? I, I wouldn't say that that's exactly what, but then th this is sort of bending in. I don't know exactly how they measure the 10 meters, okay? So maybe they're cheating on the 10 meters, but this is what I expected. We totally got cheated with that uh, tug and the xenon tank when it said 22 meters squared. That was that was the fault of whatever calculated that 22 meters squared. So we'll see. We'll see. I'll work backwards and see what the actual diameter of this is just for my numbers. And I'll work out what the periapsis ought to be and come back. Okay, the heat shield loading ends up about the same as the first mission we brought in. And so I'm just going to go with that. We're going to go with 50 kilometers again and hope that things remain the same. It might be jumping around with Kerbal Alarm Clock because obviously I went back to the Mars Transfer Vehicle and came back here. We'll double check the re reference area when we come back and then maybe we might need to do something to reset it or whatever. Okay, we've got 50 kilometers there. The Mars ISR unit will be coming in maybe first. No, this this uh, hits the atmosphere first. Okay, so we've got our... That's only seven minutes. Uh, well, nine minutes. Communication is fine. We're going around in the correct direction. Okay. All right, a little bit more ion engine burning, and then we'll be back with this to see it getting through the atmosphere of Mars, capturing hopefully into a nice orbit. Okay, I'm back and honestly I think we might have to dump some supplies off of the Mars transfer vehicle to get into orbit around Mars. We'll see. I'm looking at that hydrazine for the EVAs in particular. But um, yeah, okay, that's not what I needed. I needed far. It still says 72 meters squared. So we're going to go with it, and we're going to keep an eye on it. <laughs> well, I'll just put that, I'll keep that up there. It'll be, it'll be entertaining and informative anyway. We'll get rid of Kerbal Alarm Clock for the time being. And, yep. We should be good. Let's time up a little bit. I swear, if it changes on me as soon as we hit the atmosphere, I'm not going to be happy. Okay, so track solar panel. I don't know, uh, do these need to be retracted or not? I'm going to retract one. <laughs> that leaves us with 3% signal. Hmm. If I could command it, I yeah, we don't have remote tech. I guess I could, if I had action grouped it, I could have uh, KOS a uh, command for it to, to extend the antenna after it goes through, but can't quite do that right now. So the diameter I came up with uh, calculating backwards was 9.6 meters, not 10, which is close enough. Close enough. Oh, we've got a yaw problem again. And these are pretty powerful thrusters that are meant to turn the whole station, so... It's trying really hard. Good thing is, uh, the more it tries, the more it's dumping fuel, and uh, the weight is going back where it ought to be. But the problem is, this is actually very top-heavy right now. Oh, it said this one broke, I think. I don't know. That one's retracted, right? I mean... Well, now we don't have any communication, though. We need those SAT-PAC comsats. 
We probably should have gotten those in earlier. I think it'll still be fine. But not if it goes through the atmosphere again. And if we can't command it to boost that periapsis, it's going to have problems. This has an internal antenna, but it's not very long range. This, I don't think it has any antenna at all. It is basically 20,000 kilometers, but it'll need some sort of relay antenna. Well, it worked. We, we, got, we picked the right altitude, it's just the whole comm situation. Oh my god, they've extended. Wait. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> that's that's cheese. I I did not expect that to how? This says I don't know. I don't know how that that extended, but okay. We have a very tenuous communication right now. Hopefully the other relay satellites can help. I don't know. The sat pack satellites. I'll have to make sure that they have the right range, but they aren't deployed yet. Okay, well, let's make sure to get this boosted up to a nice place. Okay, actually we should have dumped it in the opposite direction. Alright, and there it is. So, SAS, relative rotation to the sun, and it's all set. Well. That was dicey and probably shouldn't have worked, but um, we've got three out of four in orbit around Mars so far, though this one somewhat worse for wear. And we're going to have to be very careful about what we do in the near future. So let me, let's me uh, let turn to the Mars transfer vehicle and talk about its situation. So first of all, as you can see, uh, it's got seven days until it reaches Mars SOI, so that means basically eight days or so until it reaches periapsis around Mars. And if we do this, uh, it's not actually 823. I think we only had like 700 something left of that particular plot. So let's say we do this 736. And so far we've been getting done with much less than 100 meters per second per day, more like 50. Uh, it says actually 11 days to periapsis. Oh, oh, hmm, that's interesting. Why would it take so long to get from SOI change to periapsis? Maybe we've changed the SOI change location. Anyway, um, which is good. So 11 days to periapsis. Uh, we could expect maybe 500 meters per second of this to actually get done. But after that, we still need to do... 873. So that's what it's looking like in order to capture. And I'm figuring that, and the methane and oxygen, even if we deplete it, which would not be a good idea because we still need it in order to just turn. We have a reaction wheel, but it's really, really weak and would take hours to turn this thing. So we need some RCS fuel. And if we deplete what we can, it'll probably be about 600 meters per second from the methane and oxygen. So yeah, we could dump some of the xenon gas as well. That wouldn't be great, but it might be a thing to do. We've got 9,000 meters per second with it. Some of that we need to use to get away from Mars and capture back around Earth. But how much? That I don't know. That's complicated. But we sure don't need the hydrazine in order to do EVAs because there's nobody on here to do EVAs. And once we get back to Earth, we can put more of that on. But I think I'll start by dumping the hydrazine. And then we'll have to take a good long look at the water. We can dump the waste, of course. The hydrazine probably ends up being a little bit less than a ton. That's basically 850 kilograms worth there. And then wastewater. Uh, well, we really should have been recycling all of that. So our recycler has not been doing so well. That's about 1.7 tons of wastewater. I mean, the recycler should still be working, right? And we aren't producing any new wastewater because nobody's here to drink the water. So the recycler is definitely not working right. And waste. Uh, 
so we'll do our best to make sure it works out but uh, and I'll have to see whether I want to dump some of the water or not but anyway we are going to leave this here for this episode I think we got three out of four for our first Mars captures and we've got six missions left uh, Mars ISRU, Mars Scanner 2, another Mars Scanner, Phobos Superlander, this vehicle and the sat pack it's uh, the, the problem that uh, a big problem is the fact that the sat pack was arriving last so that's a important issue that we've had and hopefully it'll arrive before we lose that 3% on the on the pioneer station module that's providing all of the communications so we will see with that I'll say thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time